So in the previous video, we created the schematic and the symbol, and now we're going to create a simulation for them. So go to cell view, and then we're going to have the inverter, and we're going to make a test bench for it, so TB. And this is also going to be a schematic. Now we can press I to add an instance, but because we created our symbol, when we go browse, we can browse to the library that we're in and include our, our actual symbol. So now we can just paste that down there. <clears throat> and now when we press I, we can add more components. And we're going to use this analog lib library, which has ideal components. So go, go VDC for a DC voltage. And we're just going to put this down here to connect to VDD. And we're going to also put in a V pulser. This is going to be what we test our input with. So you can plop that down as well. And now let's put in a few grounds. Ground, ground, ground. And let's wire this all up as well. And now we can descend into the symbol and we can look at the properties of it. And that'll be in this menu down here. And so for the DC voltage of this, we want to just set it to a variable called VDD. So you can just put in a variable and we can define that when we actually do our simulation. So we want to do the same thing for our V pulser. We want to set the, the second voltage to be VDD. We also want to set the rise time and the fall time. So those are going to be 10 picoseconds. And the fall time is going to be 10 picoseconds. And then we also want to set the period. So that's going to be 1 over the frequency. And the frequency will be a variable we specify later. And we also want to put in a capacitor for the load, because we actually want to drive something. So I'm just going to plop that down, wire it up, add a ground, and the load capacitance will just be CL. And again, just another variable. <clears throat> so that's all we actually have to do for the schematic. Now we can go launch ADEL, Analog Design Environment. And this is where we're going to actually run the simulation. So we have to do a few things first here. First, we have to import our variables. So go to variables, copy from cell view, and I'm going to give these some values. So for the load capacitance, it's just going to be 10 femtofarads. For the frequency, it's going to be 2 gigahertz. And for the VDD, it's just going to be 1 volt. Then we have to specify the type of simulation. So to do that, go to analysis and then choose. And ours is going to be a transient. And for the stop time, we're going to say 5 nanoseconds moderate level of accuracy and uh, sorry sorry about that and just okay we also have to select their outputs so go to outputs to be plotted and select on design now if we just click the output node and the input node on our schematic those will just be invert or imported into our outputs and now we can go netlist and run and You'll see it's running the netlist, and you'll get this pop-up, you know, telling you everything, and you'll get your waveform. And so this is pretty, a pretty crummy inverter, obviously. Um, you know, we didn't do any sort of details with the uh, the widths or anything. But you can see, yeah, you know, it's got kind of an uneven skew and a pretty big delay. So you can separate them out. Um, that's more valuable when, you know, you have, let's say, four or five inputs. I'm just going to clarify, I'm just going to drop this to two femtofarads just so you can see it a little bit more clearly. One of the nice things about the variables is you can just change your variable and then rerun the simulation. <clears throat> and you can see that's a slightly cleaner output, although less realistic. But if you scroll, you can zoom in on a waveform and press M to make a marker and then press D to create a distance between them. And you can see that this shows that the distance between them is 22 picoseconds. So you can get some information from your waveform simulation.